Hello, nice to be back with you again today. Um, Peter Cox here with Mark Thomas, business strategist, author of 99%. Here we go, here it is. Let me show you a real genuine copy of it. It's in paperback now. You can get a, a copy on Kindle as well. And the subtitle is How We've Been Screwed and How to Fight Back. Now, I've been looking at some of the news headlines this week. Lots of, lots of the news. Lots of very scary stuff. Um, but the occasional leak. And, Mark, this has caught my attention. It's in The Guardian, first of all, widely reported elsewhere. I'll just read you the headline. UK facing risk of systemic economic crisis, quote, official paper says. So that is, as far as we know, a leak. Um, I'd like your, your views on that. Is it a genuine leak? And if so, should we be as scared as some people are? Uh, well, I don't. I haven't seen the leaked document itself. I've seen reports in newspapers about the yes. leak, uh, so I, I have um, no way of knowing uh, where the leak is from and ha how recent the document is, and so on. Right. But I would say that it wouldn't be the first time there has been a leak. Hmm. Um, there haven't been very many, but there was a leak while Theresa May was still um, prime minister, which was the only time that an official government assessment of the economic impact of Brexit has hit the public domain. And we might have a look at that later okay. uh, because it's, uh, I think, relevant to this and, uh, and quite revealing. So there have been leaks and sometimes those leaks are acknowledged. This previous one was acknowledged and it's now up on the government website. Um, this one I don't think has been uh, acknowledged yet, mm. but... Um, uh, it seems to me quite likely a number of newspapers have picked it up. So it seems quite likely that there is a leak. And the things it says sound very plausible, okay. which is that, um, you know, a lot of adverse circumstances are going to come together and we might not really be able to cope with it properly. Yes. Yeah. So uh, there are two types of leaks, really, aren't there? There's the sort of leak that is a real leak. Um, and somebody somewhere is so disturbed, usually at great personal risk themselves, that they do leak information to uh, the media mm. um, because they want to get the news out and they feel that the, the public are being um, withheld. But then there's the other sort of leak, uh, and you get an awful lot of that in right-wing leading newspapers. That's kind of just It feels to me like they're testing the water. They're putting a few feelers out to see what sort of reaction they might get. And sometimes I think it's just propaganda to make us feel frightened. Yes. Uh, my guess is that if this is a leak, it's that first type of leak. Okay. Um, that it's somebody who's sufficiently concerned. Um, that's your, your phone. That will be MI5, I suppose, just about to come around because that, uh, they think you've got some unauthorised information. So we have a look at that unauthorised yes, data that you've got before uh, you get arrested. Yeah. Tell, us, tell us what Absolutely. this is. Absolutely. Well, so this is the previous leak. This isn't this one. So this is now about two years old. Uh, but as I say, it's the only official government analysis that we've seen. And although it won't be exactly right, it's probably roughly right. Uh, and the message is very, very simple that um, any kind of Brexit will do some uh, economic damage. What, what this paper was claiming was that Theresa May's deal would have done a negligible amount of damage. Which one is uh, hers? Been, I'm just looking from left so to right. So hers is gov government, is, is second from the right, government detail as in white paper if okay. nothing goes wrong. That's the so, least so that's damaging what, one. That's the least damaging. Got and it. that would be yeah. negligible. You wouldn't be, you wouldn't be able to say with certainty that that damage had occurred because uh, GDP growth is unpredictable so um that amount of damage it could be down to other causes right. uh, um, but obviously as you get further and further away from um being in the single market and frictionless trade and so on the damage gets greater and if you get to a new deal you've got something um uh where what they're saying is you know more than seven percent uh, impact on gdp per capita now okay. just to put it in context yeah, that's I, a I was going to impact. ask you actually i mean it's seven percent who knows what seven percent is i mean how, how is that actually going to affect you know ordinary people's lives well the the global financial crisis was the biggest um financial crisis 
according to uh, one of the deputy governors of the Bank of England in human history. Um, so that was a big crisis and it caused the Great Recession. And the Great Recession caused uh, a, a reduction in GDP of about 6%. And we've still not re really recovered from that. So when you see something which is 7.5%, yeah. which, at which the left-hand bar Jeez. is there, that, that's scary. You know, that's that's saying this is this is significantly more serious economically uh -huh. than the global financial crisis was. Wow. Um, plus, as that paper, uh, the leaks, the leak paper that you were talking about pointed out, it's not coming in isolation. It's not that we're. <clears throat> motoring along very nicely with a booming economy right now and we've got to take this big hit in our stride exactly, we're still no. in the, we're, we're still in the grip of covid which is um still not properly under control it's no. it's coming back under control but the the daily rate of infections is still far too high to to be able to contemplate saying well you know we'll just uh, now now we can ignore it mm. um that would be uh, utter catastrophe. So, right. so we're still not not perhaps in the middle, but uh, we're still very much in the grip of COVID. And as we've discussed in previous days, uh, and everybody knows, COVID has had an enormous impact uh, mm. on the economy. So, so we're already in a, a weakened position because of COVID. And then we have something and we don't know what it is. It's only about 35, 36 days to go until whatever it is happens, happens. And we don't know mm. what it is. Is it going to be a no deal Brexit? Will there be a last minute deal? If it is a last minute deal, what will be the contents of that last minute deal? We don't know the answer to any of those questions. So that makes it <clears throat> For anybody running a business, mm. that makes it extremely difficult to plan because you can't plan for one thing. You have to plan for a spectrum of things, which conceivably might even include an extension. I think both sides have said really? there isn't going to be an extension. Yeah. Um, and so maybe there won't be an extension. But actually, you know, from the from the UK side, not extending for the reasons that this paper sets out uh, would be lunacy mm. and from the eu side i can see some uh, disadvantages in extending because um you know at some point they want the uk to negotiate seriously but um an extension just puts off that date okay. but given the extraordinary circumstances uh, i would have thought there might still be a chance of extending so we you know we have really no idea what's going to happen but if there is a no deal brexit then this paper is pointing out what they call a reasonable worst case scenario mm. and we've seen from uh, from previous uh, examples that quite often that reasonable worst case scenario isn't too far from what actually happens yeah. and they were saying you know this could be nasty because uh, obviously, there'll be a big hit to the economy. We've talked about that. And a lot of sectors could be really badly damaged, not temporarily, but permanently. Mm -hmm. The automotive industry has made that very clear. Mm -hmm. um, Nissan recently said they would have to close the Sunderland plant, which is Britain's largest car plant. Um, and several other car plants are, are either already earmarked for closure or already at risk. Um, pharmaceutical industry is... Uh, going to struggle a bit. Aerospace industries said it's, it would struggle a lot. Clearly, farming would struggle a lot, uh, despite what was promised at the beginning. And many, many areas of the finance industry could s struggle. So we could have long term economic damage. Mm. We could have serious health problems, both because we're still in the middle of COVID, but also just simply because supply of certain pharmaceuticals could become yeah. very difficult. They can't yeah. get through. And some of them, some of them are sort of time critical. It's like fresh food, which is mm. one of the other things that might not be able to get through. Um, oh. So, you know, a, a significant proportion of the, the supply of uh, pharmaceuticals could be affected by this. Yeah. Um, uh, we've seen what happens when you have this kind of contraction in an economy that it's uh, actually the rich people tend to get even richer. Um, um, we've seen, I think we mentioned on a previous um, episode that mm. the world's billionaires have seen their wealth rise by 27% um, this year. Hooray! Which is very good if you are a multi-billionaire. Um, uh, it's not so good if you're at the bottom end because actually you've seen yourself 
get significantly poorer and yeah. you know many, many people are really struggling more and more people at risk of bankruptcy yeah. so so that that process of mass impoverishment could easily be accelerated by this and and the report then draws what sounds like a plausible consequence to me that public order might be um an issue because that's very interesting um, yeah uh, you know, you've got a lot of desperate people, yeah. um, and they're divided. The, the population is quite divided on the question of yeah. Brexit. Yeah. So the Remainers will say this is all the fault of the Brexiters, and the Brexiters will doubtless say this is all mm. the fault of the EU uh, and Remainers, and therefore mm. it's foreigners and Remainers who are the problem. So you get a, a, a divided population with real risk of, for example, things like, like Weimar uh, Germany to me. Well, uh, who, who knows? And mm. you know, this is one scenario the, the report is painting. It's not a prediction they're giving, it, but they're saying this, these are possible outcomes. Yeah. Uh, and they sound possible. You remember we did that analysis of, uh, of the US and asked, would the US explode? Well, we yeah. might want to revisit that um, and look at if we did that same analysis for the UK, yeah. um, how, how would the UK look uh, post-Brexit? So uh, because um, I suspect it wouldn't be much better. Just anecdotally, all right. So already there was a little bit of local news here in London. I don't know if it made the nationals or not. Uh, a few days ago, um, pub offering a offering a job. Amazingly, actually, because pubs have been pretty much closed. Mm. But it had a uh, had a restaurant actually for a waiter, minimum wage. Um, they had nine hundred and eighty job applicants. Nine hundred and eighty to do minimum wage waiting in the pub. That I don't think that's unusual. I think that's a harbinger uh, of what's to come. Well, I mean, there's a clear risk of that. So uh, I think the Bank of England recently did a survey of businesses. Uh, and so they had asked executives what their forecast was for hiring and firing. Yeah. And the, the conclusion, um, if I remember correctly, was that we could be heading for three and a half million unemployed, which is a colossal number. Yeah. Um, and uh, by contrast, there are, I think, about half a million vacancies at the moment in the UK. So that means even if you could match them all up, mm. which, you know, that's, that's not an easy thing. But if you could, you, you, um, you've still got three million people with no jobs, not because they're not looking, but because there are no jobs out there. Well, that's the uh, thing. That's the thing. You know, you had people like Priti Patel saying, uh, we're the laziest country in the world. Our workers don't want to work. I mean, that's not true. There's 980 people applying for a minimum wage waiting job in a pub. It's the fact, the fact is, there just isn't a job for them. And I think to yes, be told, absolutely. to be lectured like that, I can see why, why, pe why the government is preparing these these secret reports into into public order actually I, I, I could easily see that scenario happening in the UK but I want to ask you actually mark as an experienced management consultant let's just step back a little bit from this and look at the management job that these people are doing because it's often struck me that politicians usually get into the job without any experience at all I mean sometimes they're lawyers sometimes they're not and I just wonder whether I guess what it boils down to is are we in the current situation because they're just no good at doing their jobs or because they, there's actually an agenda at work here what do you think well I think it's a bit of both I think um, we have a uh, a cabinet which is drawn from a very, very small group in society. So many of them actually went yeah. to the, not just the same university, but even the same school and the same university. So, <laughs> you know, these are these are people who, in many cases, have known each other for uh, twenty or thirty years. The chumocracy. Uh, people call it the chumocracy, mm. and. Um, most of the people they talk to are people in that circle. They don't really talk very much to uh, the 980 applicants for that job that you were just no. uh, talking about. They don't mix with those sorts of people. They might very occasionally mix with somebody who's recruiting those people, mm. Um, mm. but they will hardly ever mix with those people. So their vision of society 
is reinforced it's groupthink basically which is you know we're we're very successful we've worked hard all our lives we've got mm. ourselves into good schools and good universities forgetting quite how much their backgrounds may have helped them <laughs> get into those good schools <laughs> and universities and then we got good jobs and we worked hard and now we are where we are and frankly you know if i can do it then anybody can do it yeah. um and yeah. so i have you know, very little sympathy for these people who didn't even bother to get an A-level yeah. and now expect to be hired yeah. just like that. So they yeah. get into that way of that mindset, yeah. which makes them incompetent because uh, their view is that the only people you can really trust to do anything are people who are just like me. So you <laughs> you you reinforce the group think you hire yeah. your chums. Yeah. You, you uh, we've seen this with the procurement of the uh, PPE. I was just going to say, they, yes, yes. I mean, what a catastrophe. What an expensive yeah. catastrophe. It's not just wasted well, billions, apparently. It's actually cost people's lives. Well, it will have cost people's lives. Um, and, you know, also the delay in the lockdown undeniably cost tens of thousands of people's lives. I think the handling of the unlocking has undeniably cost many tens of thousands more lives. So we have ha we've got a very large avoidable death toll. How do I know it's avoidable? Because if you look at the statistics as we did the other day, you mm. see that there are plenty of countries in the world that don't have a similar death toll to us. Different countries yeah. have managed uh, um, in different ways and yeah. most countries yeah. in the world have done a lot better than us so you know you do, this isn't really a question of opinion in no. terms of the results it's opinion no. about why we have the results but it's not opinion about the results we have objectively speaking a government which has mismanaged very very badly and as you say that's cost a lot of money but it's also cost a lot of lives no. um, but I think uh, so coming back to your question about the root cause of that I think uh, a big part of the root cause uh, is ideology, but I think it's also that it's, it's groupthink. And the two go together, of course, because if you only ever talk to people who share your ideology, then you just feel, well, this is the truth. Everybody believes this. Just yeah. as, you know, there are people people in some of the southern states in America who believe that evolution is a hoax or indeed that the coronavirus is a hoax. Well, if you're surrounded yeah. by people, all of whom believe that these things are hoaxes or climate change, of course, some of them believe climate change is a hoax. If everybody you know believes these things are not real, you don't believe. Yeah they're real you, so you know you they don't probably don't believe go. that you no don't i don't have to, have to go don't, on do you I? don't have to go no <laughs> <laughs> i want you to go on but you don't have to you don't have to go to the southern states of america to find you know people not wanting to wear face masks i mean no. you know almost every day in the newspaper that i look at a lot of the daily mail um, yes there are irate articles um about this gross invasion of personal freedom it's our right not to wear a face mask and i admit i don't know how many people think like that but a lot of people who read the mail are exposed to this uh, do you ever see yes that? Uh uh, uh, I don't normally read the mail myself, but I do sometimes okay. get to see the headlines. I'm privileged in that way. But, but yes, but, and it's an extraordinary point of view, actually, to, to, to treat mask wearing, which I agree is an imposition. It's a pain in the neck. I don't particularly like it. But compared with imperiling my fellow citizens just yeah. because I don't want yeah. to do it, it seems extraordinary. And uh, I was just reflecting that, you know, if you think back to the Second World War, yeah. during the Blitz, we had air raid wardens who went round shouting at people and telling them they had to turn their lights off and draw their curtains. Now, if the, that Daily Mail attitude had been prevalent then, people would have been saying things like, well, you know, I'm not going to cower behind these Nazi, uh, the threat of this Nazi <laughs> Blitz. I'm going to have my doors and windows open with my lights blazing like a proud Englishman or a proud Englishwoman. It's my right not flying. to draw my curtains it's, yes. not, it's, it's a monstrous infringement you know an englishman's home is his castle and anybody who's telling me i can't have my lights on i can't yeah. wave my flag out of the window and i can't have the curtains open you know that's it's that's just a traitor. the same it's just the and, same you know that yeah. would of course not yeah. have been tolerated during the war yeah. for very good reason and it is just yeah. the same because it would have co cost other people their lives if yeah. i say no no you know i'm not going to cower behind the virus i don't want to be muzzled or i don't want to wear a nappy on my face they use quite 
emotive yeah, language. Yeah. Um, I don't want to wear a nappy on my face. So I'm going to go um, shopping and I'm not going to do this, all this namby pamby social distancing. Uh-huh. And, you know, um, uh-huh. I'm a free, free Britain. Well, you know, if, if all they were doing was imperiling themselves, I would say, I feel sorry for them, but, you know, Perhaps mm. we should let them do it, but they're not doing that. They're actually imperiling everybody they come into contact mm. with. And so it really is very much like somebody in the middle of the blitz deciding that their right to open their curtains and blaze their lights uh, transcends everybody else's right mm. to be safe from the bombs. Yeah, fantastic An- analogy. Um, I've learned so much over the past uh, few weeks with you, actually, Mark. And uh, I have to say, actually, I won't see things the same way again. Uh, and nor will you if you get hold of Mark's book here, 99%. You can get it just by going to that little link there, 99.redhammer.tv. It'll take you straight through to the buy page on Amazon. Um, an eye-opening read. And um, if you've got any questions for Mark, he's more than accessible. Leave them in the comment section here on YouTube, and we will respond in due course. Meanwhile, see you tomorrow.